Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Are you ready? Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Rabino. And this DJ Erm in the building. And you listen to the Up and Up podcast. Yeah. Wait, what are we doing? I don't know, just listen. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What it do, what it do. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuning to the Up and Up podcast. I'm your host, Rabino. And I'm DJ Erm, man. What's going on, boss? Not shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. just them rainy days, bro. Man, we just got to get over it, man. It's yeah. Seattle. It's yeah, Seattle, yeah. man. It's all good. You good, though? You feeling good? <laughs> oh, I'm feeling great, man. Everybody in the room feeling, feeling good? Great. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Well, uh, for those of you first-time listeners, this is the Up and Up podcast. This is the podcast where we're focused on cultivating culture. Uh, mm-hmm. Strictly that, right? Yeah. Um, we, 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 we're trying to push the culture in many different ways, but one way is we bring amazing guests on this show. Yep. Right? Uh, you know, movers, shakers, hustlers, grinders, all that. shiners, all, all that, that, right? Um, you know, individuals, groups, movements, all that, who are, all, all those people out there who are <laughs> <laughs> carving lanes, right? Uh, and paving paths for people who need that. Um, so shout out to y'all if this is your first time tuning in. Um, also, this is a special episode, right? This is episode. Special. What, what number is this, man? Five zero. Yes, yes. That 50 piece, <laughs> that right? 50 piece. Episode 50. But not only is it episode 50, it's also Listener Appreciation Week, right? Yes, sir. Can we, can we get a round of applause for the squad in the building? Come on, man. Come on, man. Look alive, man. Look alive. Um, and also i just want to uh take a moment to obviously shout out the consistent listeners supporters uh viewers um you know those who've just been kind of following the movement right and and giving us the energy giving us the encouragement um the good vibes and and not again not only to us as a team um and as a platform but also to the guests that we have on the show man i'm always say i'm always going to speak on it man like the connection that we've been able to make between the guests and the listeners uh is amazing and powerful right yep it's, it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening all day, every day, right? All the time. I love it. I love it. Um, now, for those of you who want to continue supporting the podcast, you know what to do. You can follow us. Uh, just type in the Up and Up podcast. You can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and... Like it, too. And no, no, no. Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, we're now available on Spotify. So go ahead and tap in for all you Spotify listeners out there who've been blowing us up. Yeah, we're on Spotify. I know, right? That felt kind of good, though. Yeah. It, yeah, it yeah. felt good to deliver on, on yeah. you know, for, yeah, for those yeah, who yeah. need it, you know? <laughs> okay, Benham took yeah, credit for that. That's, we'll give Benham the credit for that. All right. Um, also, yeah. Also, please, please make sure to follow the movement and follow us on all social media platforms at underscore the up and up to stay connected with all that we got coming. We got a lot of great things for the for the culture, right? Mm-hmm. That's a general term for for the people. You know, we just we just <laughs> got a lot. We got a lot coming, yeah, we right? Got a lot. Um, also, please make sure to follow us as well at underscore up and up clothing or visit up and up clothing dot com. <laughs> Uh, we got a lot of great things coming as well, right? We're yes, sir. We're still sold out, but yeah. we, we will be back soon, we missed right? missed the first wave, yeah. I know, I know. It's all good, man. Yeah. And shout out to all those who did support the early launch of the yeah, store. For definitely. sure. You are appreciated. Now, um, it is episode 50, man. You know? You know what time it is? It's uh, Listener Appreciation Week. Uh, for those for those who are not familiar, Listener Pre- Appreciation Week is essentially uh, a moment for us to appreciate the listeners, obviously. Uh, we allow them to come up here and utilize this platform, right? This platform that we've been able to build to speak on things that they feel important about, right? Mm-hmm. And we've had 49 previous episodes, right? 49 powerful narratives, 49 stories that need to be heard, right? 49 figures of representation that need to be seen, and 49 conversations that we feel are going to help move the culture forward, right? Yeah. And today we're going to have the 50th conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today's guest, man, is none other than... A person that, um, you know, I would say is a friend to the show, first and foremost, right? Show. Go Cougs. Yeah. <laughs> Throw that out there. Um, I would say he's a brother who's a proud supporter and listener of the show, obviously. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a true culture cultivator as well through the work he's been able to do, which we'll get into. Yes, um, sir. Yeah, man. Our guest is none other than the ultimate and appreciated listener himself, Justin Cox, a.k.a. J. Smooth. Can we yeah. give him a round of applause? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. How yeah. you doing, boss? What up? what up? How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good, man. Thanks for coming through, man. Oh, no doubt, man. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, man. You know, you wouldn't be anywhere else in the world. 
Right. Here with us. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know that was corny. Don't look at me like that. Uh, but thank you for coming to the show, man. Thank That's you for. <laughs> thank you for submitting. Come on, man. Bro. You know I'm good for like I, one corny look, yeah. you know, line or whatever. Maybe two. <laughs> Maybe two. Yeah. It's Maybe right. three. Yeah. Just hey, stop yeah, me now. Got a couple uh, more in the bank. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for uh, participating in the listener appreciation I'm week. Without, man. Uh, you know, we're nothing without y'all supporters, man. So uh, thank you and. Um, I think you know how the show starts. We usually, we usually do quote of the day, right? Yeah, quote of the day, man. I told you guys, man. I'm taking that, bro. I'm oh, taking okay. That. You know, usually that's Irm. You know what I'm saying? That's my brother. But this is the takeover. Know, okay. You know Episode I, you know, 50, man. This is really for about, the listener. You know what I'm saying? Right? By the I'm listener. Coming in. I'm coming for the in. listener. Yeah. By the listener. So, so you want to take over the quote of the day? Absolutely. Okay, for sure. Absolutely. So, what you, you know, got for us, my brother? Quote of the day: um, Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing that it doesn't belong in a fruit salad. Mm. Think about that for a second. Mm. Yeah. Let that yeah. marinate. All right. All right. You know what I'm saying? I'm still That's... stuck on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, about to be, I'm about to be Robbie today. So, you know, for the listeners out there, can you run that back one right, more time? Right, right, right. Knowledge is knowing <laughs> that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing that it doesn't belong in a fruit salad. You know, that's comparing that knowledge versus that wisdom. You know, that, that, that thing that you, that stuff that you can learn out of a book, but, you know, that stuff that you learn through culture and, and, and uh, learn from your ancestors and stuff like that. Mm. You know, make those mm-hmm. two. You know, go against each other, and that kind of just separates it. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people seek knowledge, but in reality, you know, if you got knowledge, you're going to be putting the tomato in the fruit salad. Ain't nobody going to eat that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I like that quote, though. Right. That was a fire quote. Mm. You know? Damn. Yeah. It just got real in here. Yeah, it just did. <laughs> got real healthy in here, too. <laughs> I better not see no tomatoes in no fruit salad ever. Right, that, right. Was my, that, was my, that might have been one of the healthiest quotes we've had, bro. You know what I'm saying? I like that. Good, jo- good job, yeah, man. Good job, absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. <laughs> no, yeah. but thank you guys, though, man. I've been, and, you know, I've been enjoying this uh, this, this journey you guys have been on, man. Yeah. And, um, you know, to be able to uh, be able to hear, you know, two of my young brothers out here doing something that they're really passionate about, man, that's, that's dope. Hell you know yeah. what I'm so, appreciate you know, you, I appreciate you guys for doing what you do, man. You know what I'm saying? I, um, you know, I got a long commute to work, so, you know, yeah. I oh, yeah. Up and up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all be over here talking that shit, and I'll be like, all right, hey, I'm going to call in one of these days. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I love it, though. I love it, though, because, you know, we, we do feel it's important to acknowledge those who are supporting us, right? Um, Absolutely. Not just through providing, you know, really great stories and, and, you know, great teaching moments through guests we have, but also, like, letting y'all come up here and push topics and uh, utilize this platform, right, for what That's it's cool. for, which is to forward mm-hmm. the culture. Um, now, obviously, for those, again, who <clears throat> are, you know, this, this is your first time being introduced to this listener appreciation thing. Um, the way you do submit, we do this every 10 episodes, so episode 60 will be the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, the way you do submit and, you know, get uh, picked to win is you have to submit what your favorite episode was and tell us why. Mm-hmm. And the brother to my right did exactly that, mm-hmm. um, along with some others, and he was the one who was picked as the winner. So let's just start it I, off with I that, man. I did it first in person. I seen Aaron. Oh, I pulled okay. him to the side. Like, listen. <laughs> he you shut an item. He grabbed him like, hey, right, right. come here, homie. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, man, I, I did that. Well, I got to, you know, there's a few. I, I like certain parts, right? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I like, I but the, the one recently, um, Tremaine Isabel. Mm-hmm. That was dope. Yeah. yeah. That was dope because partially because, like, you know what I'm saying? I had hoop dreams growing up. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I'm so, yeah, for sure. So to hear him talk about, like, his college experience and, that you know, transferring and then the draft and all that type of stuff, bro, where it wasn't. Glorified, like he didn't have the glorified role. Like yeah. he wasn't, you know what yeah. I'm he wasn't Zion guaranteed. Williams, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? He yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah, guaranteed yeah. money and none of this other things. Like he had to grind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, take that grind and then um, you you know part like pair it up with like that dream. Yeah, is and that's where that's where he got. And, and hearing that, bro, that that really kind of put me into a like a, like a space. You know, to mm-hmm. like that that was tough. Because remember when I talked to you? Yeah, I didn't I didn't heard that episode yet. Oh really? You know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah, I told yeah. you when I talked to you, I told you that my my favorite episode was the track star, the track North. star, North Frederick. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He, he was dope. That was dope mm-hmm. too because dude talked about some deep shit. Yeah, he you did. Know what I'm saying, and he, like, he went he went very deep on that one. And yeah. to actually still succeed in what you're doing, like in in like not only like, not only be successful, but like, bro, like every, you know how many people wanted that spot and you won it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying you wanted, you earned yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So that was dope. But like when I heard Tremaine Isabel, I was like, "Yo, I, I wanted to do that." <laughs> yeah, nah, for sure. For I real, think, you know. And that's the thing. Sometimes you don't necessarily know how much your story matters. Right. You know what I mean? Like right, we, we bring people up on the show. We we we're not here to validate you, right? Mm-hmm. We're we're here to allow you to push your story out there, like Irma always says, for the record, right? To put right. it out there for the right. record, but. Yeah. 
again, you never really know who's going to connect to your story. Absolutely. Right? You might think just because he's a basketball player, only basketball players might connect to his nah, story. Yeah. Nah, there's yeah. people who ain't picked up a basketball day in their life that can really relate to the the journey. You know the what grind. I mean? You know, he, he's a basketball yeah. player, but he was a grinder. You know what I'm saying? For like, sure. He talked about, like, going to schools that, you know, you don't have a dream of going to St. Louis. I mean, not me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm talking, like, all, every dream I had about hoop was Pac-12 school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he, yeah, yeah. he talked about, like, St. Louis. The ones that and are Drexler. celebrated. And yeah. Drexler. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? And going out there and actually removing yourself from your comfort zone and going out there and doing what you got to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. Thought, I, like, I really like the part how he talked about, like, he locked himself in the gym when he was at Drexler. Yeah. That's when he yeah. succeeded on the court. Like, that's when he started putting up buckets. Yeah. Yeah. Saying this and that. And you could I use that as, like, motivation Channel just to, that. like, you know, lock, I locked myself in, like, that Philadelphia gym for hours on and you could ask anybody mm-hmm. at Drexel uh, you know I was just always there mm-hmm. yeah. I thought that was real dope right because like that that's something anybody can relate to mm-hmm. bro. zone in yeah. get, get down to business yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and like while he was successful up until that point he still had to zone in yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so he exactly. could become even more successful and I think that was real dope you know no, that's real for That's real, right. man. Well, shout out Tremaine, man. He he's in Belgium right now doing his thing. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we wish his, yeah, we wish his best for he's him. He's out. He's out there in Germany. Um, thank you for sharing that as well. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And you know, it's good for us to get feedback too. I love I love getting feedback. So for those of you listening, go ahead and submit some reviews as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> submit some reviews. I love reading the reviews, man. Um, now again, obviously this episode is actually designed. For the listener, by the listener, you know, we want to bring people up here who, you know, got something they want to get off their chest or not necessarily like in a way like that, but just to push a topic that they think needs to be discussed. Um, so, I mean, give people a little bit of background. Though. You do a lot of you do a lot of great work in the community yeah. from what I know. Um, can you give people a little insight on kind of what you what you currently are involved in? Absolutely. Um, you know, youth development has, has been a thing for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I started working with I started working with kids when I was actually a kid myself. I was 17 years old, 16 years old, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Now I'm I'm working with King County Juvenile Detention. Um, I'm a part of the Community Programs Division, and I do I I'm in a program called uh, Education Employment Training, basically where we take the kids that are coming out of juvenile detention, and um, we help them get back into school, and find suitable um, employment. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. Because if you ever if you ever talk to a kid, right, most most of them like they the number one thing that they're going to tell you they want to do is they want to make money, right? Yeah. So, you know, as part of my job is making sure that they're occupying their time with something productive and actually being, you know, earning. They're mm-hmm. earning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of like a lot of the crimes that these kids commit stem from them trying to earn in the best way that in the best way that they know possible. Yeah, the yeah. only options they got right. or they you feel they got. Saying? So that's what I do now. Um for, for eight years I did a youth violence prevention program. So um before that's before I did this and um what we did is we basically connected with the um what they would consider at risk youth. I don't really like using that term at risk. Yeah. Um, but um, because if you, I mean when you think about it, like by definition, at risk is any fucking kid, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's I, true. I grew yeah. up in I grew up on, in Compton, at risk. Every time I step outside, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Same thing. Then I moved from Compton to White Center. Yeah. So I don't really like using that term, but like that was the, that was what they dubbed it as. So, um, you know, and our job was to identify them, build relationships. Um, and build trust and then provide services, any services that they may need, whether it be um, education services, whether it be um, gang reduction, um, mm-hmm. drug and alcohol abuse, like mm-hmm. any of those any mm-hmm. of those services. So um, I did that for seven, eight years where, you know, I got to, um, I got to create the program and create, you know, and, and, and build a team. And, you know, for, for, for that long time, we were really putting on for White Center, the uh, whole West Seattle, like from, from, from West Seattle all the way down to like Federal Way, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that's a big ass space. Nah, no, <laughs> for real. For real. For, like, how many miles space, is that? Right, you know. Yeah, twenty, uh, thirty miles. I remember the tournaments and all that too. Yeah, back yeah, in the day. bro. Yeah. Like we still like that was. I think that was probably my most successful thing was the Peace and Hood tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. And that that kind of took off, bro. And, and while I'm still while I'm out of that position, I'm doing this over here. Mm-hmm. You know, I talked about that in my interview, bro. I was like, hey, look. Even though I'm coming over here, like this is something that I'm gonna have to continue. Yeah. And they were like, "No, you, you got it. Like that's bigger yeah. than that's bigger than anything we got going over here. So you got to do that." But like the Peace in the Hood tournament, man, we we had like 50, 54 job offers last year. Yeah. Bro. Cause we do a job fair too. You yeah. Know? We got like fifty four job offers. Yeah. Like you know, these are teenagers, bro. They, they fifty four kids just got a job. 
Wait, so Damn. so let's uh let's, let's let's kind of break it down a little bit more. So the Peace in the Hood tournament, Peace in the Hood tournament, right? Break so, it down so a little bit. Two, this year we turned it into a two day event because it, it kind of got you know out of hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we got to do it. So um so well, first day we had the job fair, mm-hmm. right? And and you know a lot of people like to pair job fair, career fair. Now like, this is a job fair. This is for like these kids that haven't found anything to do for the summer. Um, these kids that want to earn but have no idea of how to fill out an application how to go find an application mm-hmm. and 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 what how to you know how to how to build a resume none of those things right so we said fuck it you know what if you guys don't know how to find jobs we're gonna make the jobs find you mm-hmm. and we put them all under one roof right we had 35 employers there and all these employers we focused on having them being one bus away from that destination right yeah. so right there in white center right there in west seattle mm. there was all one bus away mm. So um, I like that. I like that tactic. I like that. Keeping yeah, keeping it real. close, so that yeah. is, it, it becomes more of a reality. When yeah, because if you ask a lot of kids, right, they, they that's a hurdle for them. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah for saying? sure. They be like, oh yeah, I get a job. Okay, well, cool. We're gonna put you with this job over here. How am I gonna get there? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I think I like it because it's a way to eliminate excuses. Absolutely. You know that that you know people Absolutely. are gonna come up right. with. You know, Absolutely. it's kind of like when your parents like eliminate yeah. every excuse you can come up with to not yeah. do something. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's that's definitely smart. I Absolutely, like bro. So we did that. So we and it, and we we let them know like every drop here you can get on one bus and be there. Mm-hmm. You know. So um, and we told the people we told the employers that too. Like you know we had to turn away a couple people because it's like not nah, you too deep, bro. Like you know ain't none of our kids gonna be able to get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, so we did that, um, and that's the first day. And then the second day, we do a big three on three basketball tournament. Yeah. Um, along with raffle prizes. Yeah. Uh, we have a DJ out there, a barbecue, uh, and and that's the day where we really invite as many service providers as we can possibly think of, mm-hmm. right? Because like, why? It's all about. I mean, we we try to coerce the kids into knowing what they have for the summer, right? So if we can get as many service providers out there in one area, these kids are coming out there because they want to hoop. Or they want to win a prize, mm-hmm. or or they or they just fuck with me, you know. Yeah. You know? So yeah. they come out there for that, but then they're meeting people from all these different organizations mm-hmm. and these service providers that can actually be beneficial to them. Yeah. So now, if they happen to stumble into one of these places, they're gonna see that face and be like, "Yo, I remember you from Peace in the Hood." Yeah. Boom, they are mm-hmm. hooked. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now they feel comfortable, right? Yeah. Because that's what I mean. You know, as as people of color, like that's the first thing. Even if you don't know, the first thing you do when you walk into a room is you look for somebody that looks like you. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's facts. So right. So I put them. You know, I try to do that. Right. We, me and my team, like we really try to focus on that piece. Right. And try to have them be able to walk into any organization in West Seattle or in South King County, for that matter, and know someone. Mm-hmm. You know, so that they feel comfortable and they can benefit from those resources. That's powerful, man. That I, is. No, that's powerful. For real. For real. You know, so we did that. That nasty piece in the hood, right? And we, you know, three on three tournament is what draws a lot of the kids because yeah, everybody sure. want to hoop. And yeah. we give out trophies, we give out t-shirts. You know, what I'm saying we give out prizes. And then I, I um, I got to connect with the um, the body elite balls, right? So you know, we play with those, and then I give them out to um, I give them out to all the kids with sportsmanship, right? Mm-hmm. So like, you know, if you really want to win something, like you ain't even got to be good at hoop. Just come out there and be positive. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm be positive, and you, you know, you can walk away with the six dollar yeah. basketball. No, that's real. For real. So, uh, man, I know you talk to a lot of kids. Um, question I have for you, man. I don't know if you thought about this, but you probably have. But uh, I know a lot of kids learn from you. Right. You know what I mean? So was there, like, an experience or something that ha- you know, like something that may- maybe made you learn from, like, a kid? You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely, bro. That's one of the things that these kids don't understand. I learn from them way more than they learn from me. Yeah. Mm. Way more, bro. That's a I, fact. You know what I'm That's saying? Like, real, yeah, yeah. real talk. You know, and I, I think, I mean, the first – First thing that comes to mind is um, it's actually my first kid. When I first started doing youth violence prevention, um, my first kid that I that I worked with, I had never, you know, I never met this kid. Right? They gave me a referral form and they you know, had his information on there, and I'm thinking like, all right, you know, I'm gonna go check him out, see mm-hmm. see what he's about, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and so I go. It was at Sylvester Middle School over there in Burien. I go into school and I'm like, hey, you know, I got this referral from you guys. You know, I came over here, I told you about my program, so, you know, I want to meet this kid, right? And so I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking they're going to um, they're gonna bring him in, they're going to sit us down, principal, teacher, whatever, and then they're going to introduce me yeah. and all these things, right? Yeah, yeah, Nah, they didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do that, bro. Yeah. That's messed up. <laughs> I know that is. <laughs> don't, don't do this to Sylvester, though. They, yeah, they, they, yeah. they fucked with me a lot, but, uh, but they didn't do that. They, uh, they called this kid up to the office. It was like, that guy wants you. <laughs> 
Oh my god! As a kid, you don't know what's about hey, that. Hey, You're like, what? Yeah. Kid turned around. I was like, hey, how are you? How are, I don't even know this man. <laughs> Wait, how are you looking? at It's kind of like that situation when he's like, hey, my friend wants your number. He's right, over there. Right, and he's right, just right. like, you just standing with the papers. I'm, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm sitting there. I, I'm sitting there tapping the paper, like tapping the paper on my knees, like. Damn. And, and that, that was quote that I kid you not that was his quote he was like I don't even know this man mm, and wow. I'm like where do I go from here yeah yeah I feel you so I'm like hey look I got this program where we're trying to you know we're trying to help kids that, that are already great but we want them to be even greater yeah you know what I'm saying and let's sit down and let's talk a little bit mm -hmm. you know so he looked at me he was like all right bro long as it, you know he, he thinking like long as I don't got to go back to class like cool yeah, you know yeah yeah so we walk up to the library, we sit down and we talk, and I get to tell them about the program, right? I kid you not. And we, we, we talk for about an hour, mm -hmm. you know? And um, and after we get done talking, mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, bro, you know, you could go back to class. And he's like, bro, he, I'm going to call you today. You know, I'm going to call you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, you know, like, yeah. I got it. Yeah. And so he leaves, and I, and I sat there for about a good 20 minutes thinking, like, this kid that I just met an hour ago that – had no clue who I was. Yeah. Now believes in me. Yeah. Mm. And I can't let him down. You know? Yeah. I was like, we just had a simple conversation. I told him that I like typical things, bro. Typical mm -hmm. things that that he probably should have already heard, but yeah. mm. probably didn't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he believed in me. So I was like, I can't let him down, bro. I gotta I gotta you know. I don't know if I was prepared for this, but I gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Exactly. And, and, and then we took off, bro. And actually, um, the funny thing is, is that same kid. He he had never played basketball a day in his life. Uh, two days ago, he moved into his dorm over at Bellevue College with a full ride scholarship for basketball. Wow! Can we get a round of applause for that? Real <laughs> yeah. Quick, man? That's yeah. amazing, man. That's yeah. that's crazy. That's a uh, man. I kid you not. The first that's thing dope. I did, like we set up, we set up a. Uh, we set up an incentive program, right? Like, that's what I like to do with kids, right? I always feel like if you want to take something away from them, you got to give them something in return, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want to take something out their hand, replace it with something, you yeah. know, unless they're going to. That's a mm -hmm. fact. You know, so um, we set up an incentive program, and I was like, he was a tall kid. So I'm like, you ever hoop? He's like, nah, I play soccer. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell you what to do, but. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So I told him, I was like, look, man, if, if you can go to school for the next two weeks, don't miss any days, don't be late. I'll get you some hoop shoes, you know? Yeah. And he was like, that's it? Like, I just got to go to school? I'm like, yeah, because your ass ain't been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why I'm telling you. you know? about <laughs> so, like, that's a big step, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So. So he ended up doing that, bro, and I got him. Um, I got him three pairs. I don't know why, but I got him three pair of shoes, three pair of basketball shoes, and uh, he became a hooper. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna be showing up at his games like, yeah, y'all know that I did that. Right. I did. No, he, came, he became a hooper, bro. That's like, like up. real life. Like, I like. <laughs> That's balls. dope. You know, I'm curious. Yeah. I'm curious though because, like, when you work with kids, I think everybody in this room has, at some point has like worked with you for kids, right. even if not in an organization or yeah. something. You know. Right. Um. Sometimes kids have an effect on you, right? Absolutely. Like a very strong effect on you or like a strong hold on you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. How do you find a way to not get too attached when you know like, okay, I'm not their parent at the same time, right? Like, you know, sometimes you the only time you have with them is all you really got, you know? And when right. they go off, it's kind of like, ah. And you might, you, might have, you might have a feeling that they might, when they leave you, they might go do something or might be influenced right. by something. Yeah, and you, yeah, can't do, you can't be there. So how do you deal with that in terms of like being able to kind of relinquish that control or not control but like that that connection a little bit well but i me personally uh i i don't you know what i'm saying like I, this is more for more so of a lifestyle for yeah, me for you sure, know what i'm saying sure, like sure. these kids that i meet if if we build that connection then whether or not like whether or not it's for work i'm gonna fuck with you forever you know what i'm saying like that's, that's just that's just kind of how yeah. that's, real. that's just kind of how i operate but that's real but the truth of the matter is like you said it's like you spend the time you spend with them and then when they're not they're not with you, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, on, happen, it's on them. Kind of, because yeah. life don't stop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? When your services stop, like life yeah. keeps going. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's one of the things that that I had to learn. You know what I'm saying? Like you will you will work with a kid. You can work with a kid for months, bro. And you can do so much positive shit and, and then he can fuck that up. Mm -hmm. Or he or she can fuck that up in, mm -hmm. in, in one bad decision. Yeah. And that I had to learn that, bro, because it was it was it was beating me up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I go home and be like, "Damn, we did everything we were supposed to do," and 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 then it just 
went out the yeah. window. You feel you feel guilty ever? I, I don't I, feel I, guilty, right? And and I think that's because one of, one of the reasons why is because um, one of my mentors once told me he was like, look, if you ever have a situation with a kid that that gets that goes bad, mm-hmm. you sit back and you ask yourself, did they know? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like I've been in juvenile detention, right? Sitting in the sitting in the uh, visitation rooms, and I'm sitting with a kid. I'm like, why'd you like what happened? Man, you told me not to do the do do, but I did it. Mm. And so the fact that that kid can sit there and say, you know, I did know. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like my job is done. Yep. Like I I did what I was supposed to do because everybody's going to make their own decisions, exactly. right? Exactly. And I think good work when, when it comes to youth development is letting them make their own decisions. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. You can't you can't tell them what to do. If you tell them what to do, they're not going to fuck with you. Everybody's yeah. been telling them what to do yeah. their whole lives. Exactly. Yeah. So you let them let them figure out what they're going to do. If they yeah. make a bad decision, we all got to live with it. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all got to live with it. So. I agree with that. I agree with that philosophy for sure. Bro. I feel like, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's like a, you give them like a sense of awareness. You know right. What I mean? Absolutely. Instead of like being like, do this, go here, yeah, eat that, right. whatever it is. You know it's what I'm kinda, saying? Yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's, it's kinda, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like, hypocritical. I, it is. You don't, you don't want no one to control you. You know what I mean? Right. And it's, I feel like I feel like the reason why you know a lot of black and brown parents do that is because they don't know how to articulate themselves. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They can just tell you don't do this, but they never tell you why because mm. they don't know how to say that. Right. Yeah. A lot of those a lot of those lessons come from like culture, and it comes mm-hmm. from like things that you pick up from your elders. And they didn't tell you why. Yeah. You, no, that's real because you just kind of, I pop, a thought just popped in my head where I'm thinking about it. Like, you know how some parents, like you said, they'll tell you what to do or that they won't give you the why. Right. And a lot of times we ask for the why. Have you ever, like, your parents ever told you to do something and you're like, well, why? Oh, that's, yeah. that's a mistake. Like, that's yeah. a mistake. And then what they say, yeah. I don't got to explain shit to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you're like, okay. Like, well, I got to find out this. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I think it's... Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of like one of those things where I, I was talking to the homie about this earlier today. Literally, that's right. crazy. Like how I think one thing I really want to do is try to help like the next generation find a way to have an open line of communication with their parents. Absolutely, you know? bro. Because I know damn well like it took me up until about 17, 18 to even start that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So um, that's important, bro. It is. Real. It is, man. And I think like I think one of the big things like when I'm working with parents, I always try to teach them like. You got to be able to articulate yourself. You got to be able to put into words why you don't want these kids to do a certain thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times they don't know why, mm-hmm. and they're gonna try to find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're gonna exactly. try to find out. You know what I'm saying? It, and it's simple things, right? Like I remember as a kid, like my dad, I, my my pops flipped out on me one time because I turned my back to him. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it was. It, you know, yeah. I just, I thought we were done talking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, so I turned my back, and he was like, don't you ever fucking turn your back on me. And I'm yeah. like, I th- we were done talking. You know? yeah, I was but, going back to my room. <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? But, like, to him, like, that was a major sign of disrespect. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he felt like I was belittling him. Yeah. But he didn't know how to say that. Yeah. He just, like, don't fucking do it. Yeah, yeah it's very, it's very, it's very assumptive. <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. I, I assume you already know how I feel about right. this. Right. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tell me shit. Right. <laughs> I don't yeah. know nothing. You know what I mean? I feel like the human nature factor kind of kicks in. Cause Absolutely. when, you know, you take disrespect, you get angry uh, first. You don't yeah. really mm-hmm. have the time to think, but like, hey, well, hey, don't do this because I feel it. No, it's like, hey, bro. Right. You yeah. know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you kind of. then, like, yeah. you also got to take that that moment and, and teach, right? You have these teaching moments, right? Yeah. And what my pops, I feel like what my pops really was trying to teach me is that when you're talking to a man. Exactly. Look him eye to eye. Yep. As a man, you look another man eye to eye. When mm-hmm. you guys are having a conversation and you're talking about something serious, mm-hmm. right? But. When I turned my back on him, I was no longer looking him eye to eye. He's yeah. like, motherfucker, I'm going to whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> For you know real, yeah. So I feel, like, like, I feel like a lot of parents don't know how to do those things, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and in terms, like, these kids aren't getting those lessons that they need to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think we give uh, the youth enough credit for how smart they are, too. Right. Right, yeah. like, uh, we, did, we recently did an event um, where we connected with some high school students. And, yeah. uh, like, it was the same – Format of, format of, a, of an event that we also did with adults. Right. And we did it with high school students. And, like, I can honestly say, like, I probably learned a lot more wow. from working with the high school students. Mm-hmm. And, again, that has nothing to do with anything else but the fact that maybe for myself, I probably came in there with a predisposition. Like, oh, they're, they're younger, so right. they probably don't know as much as I do because I'm older. But 
that wasn't the case, you right. know? Man, I tell you what, especially when it comes to things like, like street culture and stuff like that, mm -hmm. these kids are living that shit, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm removed, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shit. I got true. a desk, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I but these know, kids. Man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. these kids, they're living it. They're living it every day, right? Yeah, that's right. And if you really want to fuck with them and you really want to help them out, you know what I'm saying? You really want to give them those resources, you got to know what the fuck they need. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that's where a lot of people jump. Like, they they they, they jump that part, right? It's like, nah, we are gonna help these kids, but we ain't gonna ask them what they need. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, how yeah. does that even make any that's sense? That's crazy. You feel me? Yeah. No, we're, we're talk. We don't ever. I don't think we actually like look at ourselves and how we're like the strategies we're using. You know? Right. Like, I don't know. I don't. You know? Yeah, that's, that's I, yeah, let's I feel like it's like sometimes we think like this is good for them, whatever. So they're gonna do this. They're gonna be straight right. the whole time. They're like. Oh, Man, I ain't fuck with that. You want to do yeah. this? Like you know, like yeah. you know. So it's kind of like, like you already. I don't like, know what that is, bro. Is that an ego thing? What is it? Because it's like I, I, I just because you're older than someone. Like I always say, uh, age doesn't equate wisdom. Right. 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 I know some people that are way older than me and are like just foolish as hell. Right. And I know some people that are younger than me that taught me a lot of shit. Absolutely, you know what I'm bro. saying? So Absolutely. You can have like, a 60 month, sixty year old motherfucker still put a tomato in the fruit salad. Here we go. For <laughs> real. God damn it. And then put ranch all over that shit. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> You're making it worse. <laughs> nah, but I think, uh, I think like, what it really is, is, like you said before, like, they ain't giving the youth enough credit, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like, how many times have you heard, you know, a, a parent or, or an older person tell, tell somebody, tell these kids what to do? And when they try to reply, they're like, "Don't talk back." Like that is one of the, that is one of the main dis like main signs of disrespect in a household. It's like, "Don't talk back." Mm. But I'm like, "How the fuck are you not supposed <laughs> to talk back and tell you anything?" Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we're living two different lives. You yeah. know, like my pops grew up in the '70s and the '80s. I grew up. 90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. we're living completely different lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The things that I'm going through, you probably haven't heard of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had I had a, 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 a real sit-down, right, with a parent. This was a couple years back because their kid didn't want to go to school because of internet bullying. Right? Wow, he didn't want to go back. He didn't want to go to crazy. school, right? Yeah, yeah, he didn't yeah. want to go to school because of internet bullying. And his parents like, fuck it, it's the internet, fuck it. And I'm like, no, like that's yeah, life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for this yeah, kid. Because they don't use the internet properly. Right. So they don't they don't care to, to really know what it's right. about. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, you guys are living two separate lives. And if you not letting this kid talk back to you, then you're not getting the information you really need to help him. Mm. Yeah. You know? Whew. I feel you on that though. Because like that's a message, right? We, there. Like like us, like we didn't really like, we didn't grow up with the internet. We grew up right. playing outside, right. doing all that. So we're like, bro, whatever, bro. You know, like, that's nothing. But yeah. these kids, like, you start seeing kids three years old, not two years old, probably not even talking yet. Not to operate the internet. Knowing how to yeah. operate an iPad, bro. Absolutely. Like, that's crazy, you know? So it's kind of like, that's something they grew up with. Right. And, it's, and, yeah. and, and what's even worse is that these kids are now killing themselves over shit that pop up on the internet. Yeah, exactly. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, they're now killing themselves over this shit. Yeah. And you're still telling, like, if something like that happens, you're still telling the kid, no, don't talk back. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. yeah. We got we got some we got some major yeah, things I, that we need to reevaluate. Yeah. Yeah, it's a problem, man. I think um I don't know what it is, man. I keep going back to the ego thing because I just feel like sometimes people like some people just don't want to learn a certain message from right. a certain person, right? Like, they want the message, but there's certain people they don't want to hear it from. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's kind of like, you might tell a kid something that their parents may have been telling them, but because oh. Justin's rocking the shit that I like, I'm going to listen to him. Oh, man, that is, that. I mean, that's huge all yeah. around, like, like human nature, right? Exactly, that, yeah, yeah, that for sure. Messages come different from who who's telling it. And in youth development... Bro, I, I utilize that. Like, a lot of these times, these parents will come and tell me, like, oh, thank you for the work that you do. We really appreciate you helping this family, yada, yada, yada. When all I did was tell the parent what the kid told me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's all I did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but, they, um, but they don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's almost in the sense, of, like, you're the child. I'm the father. Or I'm the parent. I tell you. You listen to me. Mm -hmm. I'm right. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you don't, mm. and all these things. But it's like if you really want to get to the essence of where your child is having issues, then you're gonna have to listen to them, mm -hmm. and they will tell you. And that's a lot of things. Like a lot of people are, are they have like this misconception of oh, kids don't tell. Me. 
they will tell you every fucking thing you want to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They yeah. will tell you more than but, you. But it's know. also it's also speaks to the fact that like the more you shut them down, the less they're gonna be willing to come talk to you Absolutely. when you do want to hear from them. Like, you know, they're you not used to it. You can't be selective on when you hey. want want to pull shit out of them. They're you know what I'm saying? saying no it. deposition. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're not used to talk. telling you anything. So they're yeah. Like, yeah, it's oh, like, now you want to now you yeah, wanna, it's like I've been trying to talk to you, but you don't want to listen, and man. now you want to inquire yeah. when it's when it's convenient to you, right? Right, and I think um, that's a problem too. Right. I, feel, I feel I feel you on ego, mm-hmm. but I feel like it's also like uh, the like we're talking about earlier the experiences like they grew up in. You yeah. know what I'm saying? True, like true. if I grew up in a certain experience and I became whatever good successful whatever mm-hmm. and i see a kid that's probably not doing you know as successful i'm about to be like hey come this way yeah this is what i did exactly I'm be good i know the, i know the when way. you don't even know that there's another way that another kid like they yeah. could go and still be good exactly. you know what i'm saying right. and Absolutely. then that's when they kind of like resent a lot of stuff you know Absolutely. like yeah, a lot of ego, you know, you know? You know. but but you that's know right. um it gets real deep right like a lot of a lot of times like you know i do a lot of research on this stuff and a lot of what it is especially with like with like african-american families it's that, you know, that slave syndrome, you know what I'm saying? It's like the best way to protect your kid is to have them not say shit mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. Mm. You feel me? Like that's 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 one of the things where like, you know, um, what is it? I forget. I forget what it's called, but like Joy, what's her name? The, the She's a researcher, uh, black lady. She, Joy DeGrasse or something like that. She talked about it, right? How like, you know, back in slavery days, like, you know what I'm saying? If you didn't want your kid to get sold, Whenever, whenever, fucking slave owners come around, they don't say anything. You badmouth them. Mm-hmm. You make them look worthless. You know what I'm saying? So that, that so that everybody around them, like uh, everybody who who would want to buy them, yeah, they're like fuck it. Like if their own parent don't even believe in them mm. or don't want to hear them speak and don't want mm. none, of, I don't want nothing to do with that wow. kid, right? And so it's like that. You, you know, we, we were taught a long time ago to not give our kids a voice. We have to be the voice for them. We know what's best for them. Mm. I was like, we ain't slaves no more. <laughs> no, that's real. <laughs> at least, I mean, at least, you know, in that sense. Yeah. But, yeah, like, that's crazy. you know, that's it, deep, it, it gets real deep, man. No, that's and deep. Shit like that. Like, it actually plays a role in, 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 in how we live today, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how many, I, I, like, one of the things that I always talk to parents about, right, is what we probably all experienced it, right? As a kid, you probably heard your parents, like, downplay something that you did, something good, right? Like, one time, I kid you not, one time I brought a report card home, and that shit was damn near straight A's. Yeah. You know? And my mom was like, you still bad as hell. Wow. You know? And and not <laughs> not with, like, now I know that it wasn't anything harmful. Like, she wasn't trying to do that to be, like, rude or fucked yeah. up or anything. Yeah. But it's like, this is how we was taught. Mm-hmm. We have to make our kids seem less than what they really are so that motherfucker don't want to buy them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. literally. You know what I'm saying? And, and, like, we, you know, we go, we could get into that shit. Right but, you know, it's like crazy. Her. It's also, a th- I think it's also just a thing within black culture, too. Absolutely. You know, it's like, we know, again, one of our biggest things is support. Support is key. Absolutely. Around this way, you know, and it's yeah. like, sometimes people, like, don't want you to get too big headed, whatever the case is. But that person you probably don't want to gas up might be the most humble person ever, right? So, like, no matter what you say, they're always going to be grounded. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And so with, when, like, when a parent does that, it's just like, damn, like, it's, it's like, you're the one I'm trying to impress. You're the one I'm doing this for, and you're, like, not even, mm-hmm. like, give like me my that. props. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, give me like, my props. It's like that fucked up end of, like, togetherness, right? You know what I'm saying? They don't mm-hmm. want you to get too big at it. They don't want you to get too far away, mm-hmm. too high for them to have access to you anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they do what they do, they do what they have to do to keep you next to them. Like, how's someone else going to keep me grounded right. when I'm already grounded? <laughs> you know what, what are you talking yeah. about right now? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm, that's gonna shit. Like, I'm already that's on the ground, shit. bro. Like, what are you talking that's about? Yeah, man. That, and that's that's that, real. I mean, that's what, you know, that's what we're up against, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when you think of it, like, slavery, it was 400, 500 years, you know what I'm saying? It was mm-hmm. long. Mm-hmm. And, like, that was that was that many years of hurt and pain, right? Mm-hmm. You ever hurt yourself? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the healing takes a lot longer than the fucking hurt. Yeah. So you know you have like say you roll an ankle right, you roll an ankle that shit happens at the in, at the instant but it take you a month to get over it. Yeah. It takes a lot longer to get over that shit yeah. than to actually heal, and like we're trying to heal four hundred years mm. in fifty years. Mm-hmm. Like we need a lot more time, and yeah. all this shit plays into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think like I think we gotta um, 
we got to take a step back. Well, not necessarily a step back, but we just got to open our eyes and open our minds to that and say, you know what, we're still healing. Yeah. So a lot of that shit that we go through is a healing process. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people just forget about that part, yeah. bro. Like, we, we, got, we got a lot of healing to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think also it's like, I think we haven't been too experimental with, mm-hmm. like, trying different ways to, like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, like if I, when I'm a parent, it's like, I'm not going to follow no <laughs> fucking blueprint that you use. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you might have to figure it out for yourself. Figure yeah. out what's the best way to raise your children. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? In, a, in this world that you grew up in, so you kind of are already aware of what they're about to go into. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But it's like we kind of have this. I really, I'm really against like collective thinking, collective group thinking. I don't like that. I think we got to find a way to be more in, individual. Ain't no, it ain't no cookie cutter way to do life, yeah. bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, not at all. You 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 can't take a, a blueprint to raise a kid. Like these, every kid is different. Mm-hmm. Everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? So like. Your first kid is gonna be different than your second kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Saying, like, real, yeah. <laughs> My older brother's way different than me. Way yeah. different. Than me. <laughs> like you can't like everything ain't gonna be the same way, you know. Yeah. So it's like I think a lot of times parents forget things like that, like the little things. Yeah. But at the same time, like we also gotta appreciate the black parents because mm-hmm. we. They, we got it. We got it hard, but we got it bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Black parents, bro, especially mothers. You know that's the worst demographic in America to be a black woman. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you don't get shit. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm that's saying? Facts. Like, that's facts. But like, but when you think of the black family, you know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck how good, how great your dad is. You, that motherfucker's scared of your mother. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Nah, and I for sure. We, I agree. Yeah. 100%, yeah. Like we got it. We got it. So we, you know, I give, I give, you know, my mom shit. I give her all the credit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, I was in, in in L.A. doing shit that I had no business doing it. Mm-hmm. And she made, you know, she made a tough decision to like put me on a plane and say, you know, I ain't gonna see you every day, but good, that's good enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. She gonna go up here with your pots and be good. Yeah. yeah. So like things like that, man. Like you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we got fucked. We, we fucked I mean, with the, I mean, fucks with the mothers. You yeah. know what it is? Like oh, histor- historically, you know, black women have been the protectors too. Absolutely. Like, but they just they're like they don't get the credit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like right. They're, they're like the real hero that doesn't really get to right. wear the cape mm-hmm. and be like, the on the truth, man. You know, on the poster or whatever. That's the I truth. I agree, hundred percent. So, uh, man, I kind of want to switch gears a little bit because you were uh, well before we started recording, or whatever. You're you're spitting some very important facts about the uh, that that program. Where they're trying to double the beds. Oh, the, oh, want to talk the, about that. The youth jail. Yeah, the youth yeah. Detention. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know. Um, well, that's one of the things. Like, you know, we had a lot of people protesting that new youth jail, mm-hmm. um, the youth detention, um, and uh, like part of the reasons why was because like things that you know they were supposed to like damn near double the number of beds that they had in there. Like, the, you know, we we know if if there's beds, yeah, they you know they they're gonna get money, but they get money literally by every time somebody sleeps in one of those yeah, beds. Exactly, they get, they get yeah. money, so they're gonna fill the motherfuckers up, right? Um, but we had some dope people, bro. We got some dope people who really stepped in and, and like put their print on and then changed some shit around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, and that's one of the reasons why I even went to go. Um, why I even took the position, like I was telling you, I even yeah. took the position to work with. King County Juvenile, you know, Juvenile Detention is because, like, we have some dope people step in there and actually change some shit around to where we are being progressive now, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We are actually thinking about these young black and brown kids that we've been locking up forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, exactly. You know, locking them up, giving them, you know, three hots in the cots when they really needed resources and mm-hmm. education. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like... But, like, you know, you asked me before, like, we were talking about why I take this after so long doing community work and, like, being, you know, front line with the kids in the community. You was asking me, like, why would I take this position? And I was telling you, like, you know, we, we I think as, as African Americans, like, we got to be able to, um, we got to be courageous and we got to step into these spaces that we have access to, mm-hmm. you know. And that's why I was, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like uh, for a long time I was like, you know, fuck the county, I ain't, you know, even though. They get the best benefit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like for a long time, I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, what I'm, yeah. I'm right here. I'm with my people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, I got, I was, I was, well, you know, one of my people. He told me he's like, you know, if you granted access to this space, that a lot of, it ain't a lot of brothers can get in there. Yeah. And you're not wanting to take it. You're selfish. Yeah. Mm. You know, you're selfish as fuck. Like, you need to step up. You need to be tough. You need to be courageous and get in there and do what you do. Like what, yeah. you've been, what you've been doing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, that shit hit me. I kind of sat down and was like, 
like, damn, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm pretty sure, like, what I'm doing over here, you know, South King County, West Seattle, somebody else can step up and do that, mm-hmm. you know? But, like, it ain't very many people who can touch this this space right here mm-hmm. that I have the opportunity to touch. Yeah, it's bigger. It's always bigger yeah, than yourself. Yeah. When, you, when, you, when you realize how much bigger a lot of these opportunities are right. than just you, it, it makes it actually makes it a lot easier to just make that decision. Yeah, you man. know what I mean. So, but so I it, do, it does take people like your your homie and your friend to yeah. step in and say yeah. that too. For I sure. mean, you know, that that shit had me thinking to where I was like, damn, am I, am I being a bitch? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. you know? so yeah, so yeah, nah, no, I, I took that I took that space. But like you know, with the youth jail, with the youth jail, though, like you know, we're doing some things. Like it's about to be a whole resource center in there mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like we, like me, myself, my mentor, like. Some brothers, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Some brothers are really, like, the forefront of what that's going to look like. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that right there is that's deep. You know what I'm saying? We, like, fucking judges and shit are, are, like, looking at us like, okay, what are you guys about to do Yeah. in that space? How are you going to use that space to make sure that we're not repeating, repeatedly knocking these kids up, mm-hmm. you know? So, like... That, you know the fact that I have a chance to be a part of something like that, man. That's historical, bro. Because it can bro, it can become real. something that's unprecedented. Right. That you know a lot of other cities outside of Washington or Seattle, um, and out, out other states. Yeah. Sometimes they need to look at how other people did it to find a way to do it in their own place. You Absolutely. Know? So, um, Absolutely. Man. I mean, we even scrapping the whole like detention, like juvenile detention. Yeah. You know, we're calling it a resource center. Like, that's what we want it to be. Mm-hmm. We want, like, a kid that has no criminal background, no no, no record, none of that, to say, you know what? I've been looking for a job. You know what? I'm going to go to this resource center. Mm. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to fuck with these people, and I'm going to get me a job. Like, that's what that's what we really want from that space. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Man, that's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful, man. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the fact that, you know, me as a, as a black man, you know, I was given access to that space, and and for for the longest time, like I was like kind of de- like backing away from it. Yeah, yeah man, we we got to stop doing stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, that's a great message too. I think I it's a message it. to people who are listening and watching to just understand. Like sometimes the space you've been in, and you might have mastered or figured out or feel like you got it, is preparing you for the next chapter. Absolutely, right? Like, Absolutely. And then I think that's important too to realize like you did that work. And that work was actually purposeful because it had it was supposed to lead you into this. Right. That's yeah. how I see it. Absolutely. You know? And sure what? Yeah, I, hell yeah. I feel like you had that. Uh, like it was important you were open minded about that. Because mm. yeah. when your homie came up to you, you could have been like, "Man, get out of here, bro. You don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. You know. Right. But you were like, "Hold on, bro. You might be right." You, know? you gotta listen, bro. Yeah, you gotta like, listen. Yeah. That's I think you know one of the key things, bro. You surround yourself with the right people. I don't give a fuck what they're doing or, mm-hmm. or you know what type of person they are. If For you real. surround yourself with the right people, you gonna pick up shit like that. Yeah. You know what I'm exactly. saying? And, like, you know, for me to hear that, it, it really put me in a whole different mindset. Now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go get this. I'm going to go get this job. And when I do get it, I'm going to try to make the most positive change I can possibly yeah, do. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We're, I mean, we're all we're all contributors, bro. Oh, everybody. Yeah. I don't care. Absolutely. I was talking to Naomi earlier. I was like, man, everybody's a contributor. Absolutely. And now, whether your contribution is beneficial or detrimental, I don't right. know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But everybody's contributing. You're contributing something. That's I don't real. care what it is. You're either hurting real. the culture or you're helping it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So you definitely yeah. helping it. So shout yeah. out to you and I appreciate it, for man. doing that work, bro. I was even telling Aaron, I was like, man, you know, some of the reasons that I wasn't even trying to take the take the job, right? Is some crappy, some bullshit. You know, I was telling Aaron, like, because at my old job, like, I had gotten to the point where like say, you know, if I woke up late. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just gonna go. It's like, it's like, just, hey, it's like, it's like Shaq sitting out to the playoffs, you right? Know like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That got to the point to where, like, they're like, you know what, this man gonna work more than his, you know, yeah. what he needs to do anyway. Yeah, like, exactly. you know, ain't nobody gonna question him, yeah. So, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get that up. But meanwhile, our, our 15, 16 year old black kids is getting locked up for breaking into a fucking restaurant and stealing food, mm. you know, because they're, I, I cause they're hungry. Not, Right. Yeah. I kid you not. I had a kid. He broke into a restaurant and stole food, and they locked him up for it. Nobody at that motherfucking table said, damn, why can't we just make sure he got food? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and I think yeah. that's been one of the biggest things, like like going and working, to the, working with the county and meeting all these people. There's so much disconnect, bro, from actual real community issues and real people. Mm. There's so much disconnect. Like, Huge. We're locking motherfuckers up because they're stealing food. 
Yeah. <laughs> Instead of getting yeah. them food, like, it's, it's, your survival crimes, bro. Because the thing is, bro, man, it's it's really like uh, I'm, I don't I don't even want to say the quote because I'm a butcher, but we have, when we had Nikita Oliver on the show, she oh, yeah. she killed it. She's bro. dope. She, well, she yeah she man. she's amazing because she she spoke about how the people have. Um, proximity to the problem, so they should also have proximity to the power. Absolutely, right? Uh, that's not exactly word for word, but that's essentially but what you're no, saying. No, absolutely, yeah. yeah, bro. But that I mean, you 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 can't be bringing up one of the goats. You know, like, you got me sitting here, <laughs> dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you yeah. talk about like community development, like she, nah, yeah, you know, if sure. we had to if we had to make a fucking uh, Mount Rushmore, like we put her face up there. For sure. Know? She, sure. she, 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 she's dope. Yeah, she's yeah. a she's a dope contributor as absolutely. well. Absolutely, <laughs> one contributor. day though, you know, instead yeah, of Jay yeah, yeah. up there. Yeah, nah, yeah, but not. But, there's, <laughs> there, no, but there, there's some kids who who very well may be seeing you in that light. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. You I, never and, know. You know, and um, and I I know that. You know what I'm saying? And I um, I, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's a humbling, a, a very humbling experience, right? To have a kid. I had a kid tell me. He said, "Man, when I grow up, I want to be just like you." And I'm thinking to myself, like. What? <laughs> Dang, shit, man. <laughs> you know what I'm I can't even find matching socks in the right, morning you know, and some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like real talk, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm just like, normal, just a normal guy. <laughs> you know? That's my problem. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, nah, he told I had a kid tell me, like, he said, man, you, he's like, you so dope, bro. He said, anywhere you go, you they show you love. And he was like, when you have a kid, bro, your kid's going to get love from everybody. And mm. I was like... <laughs> Damn, yeah. like that that deep. <laughs> I'm know? about to have a kid real quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking to myself, like, let's see what this look like. <laughs> you know? And he was telling me, he was like, bro, everywhere I go, he was like, I'll be in trouble and shit. And I'll, I'll bring up your name, bro. I get out of trouble. I was like, yeah. shit, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, shit, how that work for you? Wow. But, but think like, about when you was a kid funny. and you was getting in trouble. You're like, man, I wish I had a dress in the, to, to pull me out real of this. Time, you know what I mean? So, real, but I did, I, I did though, um, you know, when I, when I became a teen, when I moved to Seattle, I had somebody like me. Um, my boy Namus, he works at the Boys and Girls Club. Mm. Uh, you got, you probably seen him, like, Big yeah. Simone dude. He's be, he been working there since, like, yeah. the early 90s and shit. But, like, he was the first person that I met that really, like, was able to navigate both worlds. You know what I'm saying? Mm. When, I, like, when I say that, it's like, he can go out on the streets and everybody's going to show him love. Mm. But then he can come over here in the fucking room with millionaires and they're still going to show him love. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I was like, I used to sit back and be like, damn, like, Everybody fuck with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, everybody yeah. fuck with him. Yeah. And then like before you know it, like, you know what I'm saying, going to college and like, doing what I do, like mm-hmm. next thing you know, like I'm I'm damn near there. You know what I'm saying? I'm like he kinda put that even like unconsciously, I didn't even know this is this is what I was trying to become. But he kinda like showed me like this is this this is possible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. I came from you know, I grew up in Compton where you either in the streets are you deep in the books and hope the streets don't get yeah, your ass? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, so it's like you had this man who, who I, when I came over to White Center, he was like, he fucks with both those worlds. He's mm-hmm. seeding both those worlds. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker was like, you know what he used to do, bro? And we didn't even know like how much money he w- we were saving him at the time. And when he was in high school, he worked at the Boys and Girls Club, but he also had a real estate business, mm. right? So he used to buy houses and shit, and he used to like demolition them and build them motherfuckers up, right? And so he used to get like 15 of us, bro. Hey, y'all want y'all want to make some little money? Shit, whatever. We don't really care, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right, come knock this house down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as teenagers, bro, we'd be in that motherfucker. Our kids, you know, we'd be in that motherfucker knocking walls down, yeah. like doing stupid shit. We yeah. we bet one of my homeboys. We bet him that he couldn't run through the wall, bro. So he, boom, like. <laughs> Yo, there's gonna be some real estate cats listening to this right now. Right. And they're like, yo, right. we're that's about the move. to take that with the license, But not like we did that. You know what I'm saying? And like. And and it took me to become an adult to sit down with him and be like, man, what? How did you figure all that out? Like, what were you doing? You know? And I didn't know that he had a million dollar company. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he had a yeah. million dollar company, but he still got up every day and came to work at the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. <laughs> like, you want to know when I knew something was up, bro? I asked him for a ride to basketball practice. I got into his car, and he had a thirty-two thousand dollar check on the floor of his car, and I was like. Hey, dude, you know you got to... He was like, oh, shit, give me that. My wife's going to be mad. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I need to know more about yeah, this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And he started putting me onto that game and shit. And I was like, okay. Yeah. You know, I was like, damn, like, you really get... You step into all these worlds and get that kind of respect. Like, I want that. Yeah. I want that spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I love Definitely. it, man. You got to be intentional. I think, again, we always say that. Like, you never know who's watching. And you got to be intentional how you move. Someone's watching every single person in this room, whether Absolutely. we know it or not. And how you move is how they're going to interpret 
you know? Yeah. I don't even mean? know if you remember that, bro, but I really like a thirty-two thousand dollar check. Yeah. Like a thirty-two thousand dollar check. Like and I'm that like, is crazy, I'm though. like sixteen years old, bro, where a hundred dollars is still a lot oh, of money yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like thirty two thousand, like bro, you rich. And it's sitting on the ground of your car, on the right. floor of your car, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? And he's like, Oh, give me that. Don't tell my wife it was on the ground. Like that's it. That's all you worried about? Wow. <laughs> But like yeah, you know wild, that type bro. of shit, man. Like and you know, growing up, you know, I had I had him there, and, and my pops knew. Like my pops really fucked with him too. Mm-hmm. All my homies really fucked with him, so it was like, shit, this you know, my man's doing this. So sure. you know, that's that's those are footsteps. Those are footsteps that's there if you want to walk in them. If mm-hmm. not, let him know. He'll show you something else. That's real. That's real. For real. Uh-huh. I want to give you a chance to shout out anything you want to shout, shout out right out, now. Shout out anything. Ooh. <laughs> Shout out God. No. Shout out. Right, right, right. Hey, anybody right. in the team. Uh, uh, I sh- oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I shout out my anything. bros. I shout out my bros. Uh, NLS, you know, nothing like success, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. my, my guy. the squad. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got to do that, bro, because that was like, uh, you know, that was that was something like for me. Um, you know, when I got to college, bro, that it was tough. I, that was one of the worst. When I first got there, it was one of the worst times of my life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. After a few, after you know, a few semesters, it was the best time. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but like when I first got there, bro, I never felt so uncomfortable in my own skin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kid you not, my first, my first college experience, um, I went to, I went to my first class, bro. It was a fucking auditorium class, and I walk into that motherfucker. It's five hundred something people in this fucking class, and I'm like, shit. You know, first mm-hmm. day of school, mm-hmm. got my backpack mm-hmm. all type of shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I walk up to the front of the fucking class, like, yeah, I'm getting as close as possible, bro. I'm doing the shit the right way, you know. And I sit down, and class gets started, and I'm chilling and shit, and I'm like, damn, this shit packed in here. Motherfuckers are sitting on the steps. Motherfuckers are standing in the back of the class. And I look around the class. There's four fucking empty seats, two next to me, and two next to this other black dude on the other side of the class. <laughs> empty. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, you know, all right, I ignore it. I ignore it right now. Come back the next day, you know, two days later to that class. The same shit. And I was like, what the... F-? Like, I'm smelling myself like that. <laughs> What's going on? Like, what am I doing, bro? Yeah, yeah. And like, that fucked me up. That fucked me up because I grew up in Compton, in that, you know, L.A. area. Moved to White Center, mm-hmm. the Seattle area. Mm-hmm. I ain't never really had to deal with it that deep. Oh, yeah. You feel me? Like, and you're talking about Washington State University and Portland, Washington, Washington State. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I was like, go cool. Just go con- cool. Context for the listeners. Right, right, it's PWI. Right, right. <laughs> I was probably in the next room yeah. feeling the same thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah, sitting here because I know, but for those who are, you know, it's a predominantly white institution. Absolutely. And like, and so like, I, you know, I'm going through this. I I never had to go through it that deep, bro, to where motherfuckers didn't want to like rub shoulders with me. Yeah. You know, so I, I, that was the worst I've ever did in school in my whole entire life. Mm. Um, and I know they always talk about like, oh yeah, the first you know the first semester is always the tough. Da, da, da. Uh, that's your fuck environment. That, that they fuck that fu- they fucked me up, bro. Like mm. I was like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave the house. I'm like everywhere I go, I'm like motherfuckers staring at me. Yeah. Like I used to get on a bus, bro, to go to campus, and motherfuckers will stand and hold the shit <laughs> instead of sitting next to me, bro. Yeah. And it fucked me up. And then like you know after a while, I started kicking it with my my bros. Like we started really started just doing everything together. You know what I'm saying, and also mm-hmm. that's when college became college. Yeah, you know, that's when Wazoo you became Wazoo. Tribe. You yeah, find your tribe. Absolutely, yeah. bro. Absolutely. So that's part of the thing. That's something that I teach the kids every time, my bro. When you go out there, find your find your group mm-hmm. and, and get in it and stick to it, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we did everything together. I mean, we fucking we would study together, we hooped together, we yeah. worked out together, we threw hella parties together. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I, know. I was, I was <laughs> in there. I was at a couple of them <laughs> things. Few of them, a lot of them things actually. <laughs> Like, yeah. No, but that's we, did, you know, and I think like, um, you know, I was a, I'm a first generation college. So I was the first, first college graduate of my whole family. Not, not my immediate family. I'm talking like my whole. If you go to my yeah. family reunion, bro, like yeah. hundreds of people. Wow. That's a lot. You know, ain't nobody graduated college, and so like the fact that I had to navigate that shit without having a parent or anybody that's been through it to call. It was like that shit was tough, mm-hmm. and and it because it's because of my bros that I actually got through it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we still did fucking financial aid lines together. <laughs> crazy, you know what I'm saying? We still did that motherfucker together. Yeah. Like, they didn't know what the fuck they doing. I didn't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, like, yeah. nobody knew what we were doing, right? Yeah. But 
but we figured it out, you yeah. know. So shout out my bros for sure. Yeah, shout out you to know? them, man. Yeah, no, man. I definitely love watching y'all move like as a unit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it man. Was, it was dope to see that. And too. that's something that's big for me, right? Like I don't, I don't really like to talk about it a lot because you know I don't want to take credit for anything anybody else has done. But like when I graduated Wazoo, that wasn't a fucking, it wasn't a regular thing for people in White Center. You know what I'm saying? Like when I when I moved to White Center, bro, like they. Like, what, like I fuck, you know I fuck with Weissner tough. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Weissner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, shout out go. to Weissner. <laughs> yeah. But like I fuck with Weissner tough, and like that wasn't a regular thing, right? But after I graduated, after I graduated from Wazoo, bro, I would need like both my fucking hands and my fucking toes to count how many kids from Weissner that don't went to Wazoo. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. it was, it was a point. Like I'm talking like hella, mm. you know, kids that I I didn't even know. There was one kid in in particular that really. It really like spoke to me because this kid grew up and he was always very very open about his love for you, Dub. <laughs> yeah. He was and he was one of those kids that no matter where he went, he was gonna be successful. Like, yeah. He was that kid, like he was smart as shit. He was like young Filipino Filipino white kid, right? Yeah. yeah. I, matter of fact, shout out Kelly. His name's Kelly. Yeah. Shout out Kelly. Kelly, shout out Kelly, Kelly Beck. Kelly yeah. Beck. Yes, yes. Yeah. And like, um, and he he told me straight up like, I'm going to Dub, bro. And I'm like, all right, you know, shit, I'm going to be happy wherever you <laughs> yeah, go. You yeah, feel yeah. me? Just do your thing. And then one day, like, he uh, he saw me. He was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to just tell you, like, honest truth, bro. You you made me go to Wazoo. And I'm like, the fuck did I do? Yeah. <laughs> I don't work for them. I ain't you no crew. I'm like, what did I do? You know what I'm saying? And he was like, nah, bro, you, you just made that shit seem so dope. So I'm going to Wazoo. Wow. Damn. And I was like. That's big. Yo, I sat back and I, I was just like, yo, like, that's that's crazy. Mm-hmm. This kid loved you up from fucking birth. His dad loved you, Dub. Like this is this is a family thing. Yeah. And he was like, Nah, because of you. Like I'm going to Wazoo. I'm going to be with my bros. We gonna go. We gonna go create NLS all over again. Mm. Yeah. You know. And I was like, Yo, that's, that's 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 crazy. That's amazing, bro. That's yeah. impact, man. Yeah. And 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 at, at that point, I wasn't even. I didn't even know that's what I was doing. Yeah. You know. I just was like. You're just living. I just want to call it. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> no, that's real. So that was that was something that I was I was always like, Damn, that's dope, but. You know, shout out, shout out them, shout out White Center, uh, shit, shout out, you know, my family. Um, I don't got a lot of family in Seattle, but the ones I do got, like, you know who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Pops, shout out my pops, crazy them motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all want to have a crazy show? Bring my pops. <laughs> I definitely ain't gonna turn my back on them. <laughs> <laughs> no way. My pops, wild. Yeah, man. Man. my pops is wild, but. Uh, yeah, man. Shit. Shout out to everybody who fuck with me. I, you know, I fuck with y'all too. Man. Yeah, man. Sure. And then um, before we get you out of here, we always uh, let our guests kind of um, just cast some things they may have coming down the line. Any announcements of, you know, projects or uh, maybe things you want people to get involved in. We got a lot of listeners and viewers who got a lot of free time on their hands who may want to utilize it to get involved. Um, how can they get involved with some of the work you either are currently doing to help out or you previously did. Yeah, man, I think the most important thing, right, if you if you really want to, like, get involved, fuck, fuck going through me. Mm-hmm. There's young people around you at all times. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think that's one of the things that we forget to do, bro. You got young people around you, give them your time, give them your attention, yeah. give them your word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Listen, listen to them. You know listen. Talk to them, sit down and talk to them, and fuck with them for real. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's one of the things that we really got to, we really got to do more. You know what I'm saying? I agree. We really, we really got to give these young people, like, like let's be real, like, not to call you guys out or anything, but, like, when is when is the last time you guys sat down with a young person and had a dope-ass conversation? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, real shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, and then this ain't just for you guys. Like, no, no, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, no, for sure. When was the yeah. last time you sat down with a young person, the 16, 17-year-old, yeah. and, and you didn't, I'm not talking about, well, you need to do this, or you need to do that, or you stupid for doing this. Like, none of that. Like, sit down and like, yo, how you doing? That's you know the one. That's the question right yeah. there. But really asking really? how you doing. Like, yeah, how yeah. you doing? And I you know, I give that, you know, that credit to to um, to somebody that, you know, he ain't here no more. This older guy, um, Don Charles, is actually my ex-girlfriend's dad. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that every time he was, even after I, even after I, um, even after I broke up with his daughter, Every time he see me, he would ask me, how you doing? You know? And not just because, but, like, when I told him how I'm doing, he would have follow-up questions, and he would have advice. He would have suggestions, you know what mm. I'm saying? So he really, he really wanted to know how I'm doing. And so it's like, after, every time I talked to him, after that, every time I left with a clearer mind, I left with some good ideas, I left with some direction, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we need to do that more. Mm. We need to do that with these young, young fellas around us, bro. Like, That's real. A lot of times, like we all know, like 
there's there's kids out there that's grown up with no father figure. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And all it takes for you to do is just to sit down, fuck with these kids on some real shit, you know? And, and, and you can help change that. I kid you not, bro. You can help change that kid. Like, something so simple. Mm-hmm. I kid you not. There's a kid today walking. To, he's probably an adult now. I rem- I'll never forget this, bro. I was, I was like, 19 years old. And um, I was working at the Boys and Girls Club. And we had a field trip at the zoo. You know what I'm saying? We had the field at the fucking Willow Park Zoo. Mm-hmm. And uh, this kid was like, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, he was like six years old. Or, you know, re- really young. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, let's go. You know, I take you in there. I take them in there, and the um, the stalls. It was two stalls and like a bunch of urinals. The stalls were filled, so he was like, "Oh, I'll wait." And I'm like, "You gotta go number two? Like, nah, you know, I got I gotta go number one. So the urinal was yeah. right there. Like, yeah. He just told him like, "Nah, man, I'll, I'll wait." You know, and I'm sitting there like, "Why are you waiting?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but. He didn't have a dad. And up until that point, every time somebody has taken him to the restroom, he went with his mother to the ladies' restroom mm. in a urinal. Mm. I mean, in a stall. Mm. They didn't have urinals. Mm. So he didn't know how to fucking use a urinal. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so I sat there for a while and not knowing, like, not still, I still, that still hadn't hit me yet. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to use the restroom. <laughs> I'm going to go, yeah. I'm going to go eat. Yeah. So I get over there. You know, I'm doing handling my business, and he walks up, and he's shaking his shoulders like I just did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he's doing exactly what I did. Yeah. And it, I'm like, I'm thinking this is a joke, and then yeah. it hits me like, damn, man, I'm teaching this kid how to how to go to the bathroom, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. A, like a, like a man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like yeah. you know because all he knows is what he's been taught. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like that type of shit, bro. You don't have to have no kind of degree. You don't have. To, you don't even have yeah. to be a really good person, bro. Yeah. You just just give them that kind of that kind of knowledge and, and fuck with them and vibe with them on that yeah. type of level. And anybody can do that, bro. We all we we are all able to do that. Yeah. So like, if that's if the, you know if there's people out there that's really looking to get into like like helping out, mm-hmm. man, you got excuse me, you got the people around you, bro. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta you gotta be alert and you gotta acknowledge them. Yeah, that's bro. the biggest thing. Yeah, I like did. Shit, that kid probably if I wasn't there, bro, he probably would have pulled down his whole pants to go yeah. to go pee in the urine. Sure, bro. Like, everybody was <laughs> yeah, looking at it like, hey, yeah, don't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. But real. like it's shit like that, Professional bro. Professional like, potty trainer. Right. You, know you feel me? Like <laughs> nah, I put that on my resume. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um but yeah, man, uh, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you go with this one. We always ask this question, I'm sure you probably know, uh, to cap off the show. Um it's something, you know, we love to ask because it'll cap up cap off the show but it'll also cast kind of what's ahead right, right. what's to come because there's a lot to come I'm almost certain for you um, so if you can my brother what's one word to describe what keeps you on the up and up what keeps me on the up and up um, community mm. um, and I say that with like with all intentions bro like we were all raised with the community of people around us you know they say um, it takes a nation to raise a kid yeah mm. mm. And um, I think like we got we have to be more intentional about that nation, about that, that about that army that we put around this around these kids, mm. um, and and building that community. You know what I'm saying? Like get to know your neighbor, mm. not as somebody you live next to, but as somebody you fuck with. Because nine times out of ten, you and your neighbor are going through the same struggles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? A lot of people don't realize that. A lot yeah. of people do not realize that, bro. That's something that in my work I've seen a lot of. Like, we want to give these families resources, right? I give the resources to one house and then have to go to the next house and give it to them again Mm -hmm. because they're not communicating. They don't fuck with each other like that. Yeah, Yeah, that's real. You know? I definitely definitely agree with that, for sure. So so I think, like, when it comes to, like, up and up, man, it's community. I want everybody to have a community. I want every community to be able to go outside and talk to their neighbors. Yeah. Bro, when I, when I bought a house. I bought a house in November, bro. I swear to you, I thought my neighbor was gonna bring me a fucking pie. <laughs> <laughs> I seen in the movies. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? I'm thinking like, yeah, bro, I'm gonna give me a pie. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bro, nothing. Wow. Yeah. It was almost like they, you know, you know. I kid you not, my neighbor used to give me the Isaiah Thomas, bro. You know, when he ducked out, the, <laughs> he oh, ducked yeah, down man. on me like that, bro. Yeah, he, yeah, and I'm like, yo, I'm like, hey, what's up? He like, I don't know you, duh. <laughs> yeah. Putting and on Christmas, like, Merry Christmas. You feel me? <laughs> and and the whole time I'm like, damn, like, 
we gonna be here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so we better right. get comfortable. But yeah. like th- that community, man, a lot of people don't know. A lot yeah. of people ain't. A lot of people ain't on that. So I feel like we gotta get back to that, bro. Like growing up, my best friends were the kids who lived next door to me. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. You that's what I'm outside. saying. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? I remember plenty of times like having dinner, you know, at, at my neighbor's house. You know. Why? Not because I was not because I didn't have dinner at home. Because shit, I was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was time to eat. Yeah. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So it was That's like, real. you know, you got you got treated like family when you were there because that community was built. So I think like mm. we got to get back to that, bro. I agree 100, percent bro. For sure. I think yeah, we're we're more connected through our experiences than anything else. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, regardless yeah. of again, regardless of what we look like, age, race, gender, whatever the case is, like. If you guys are growing up in the same neighborhood, you're probably going to experience the same, same shit. shit bro. Mm-hmm. So y'all same are more shit. connected than you Might think. Might as well experience that shit together. Exactly. 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 You know? I love it. I love yes, it. Well, sir. um, yeah, man, again, Justin, thank you for coming to the show. Absolutely, again, thank man. you for supporting the platform. Thank you for be, uh, participating in the Listener Appreciation Week episode. Yeah. Uh, thank you again for the work you're doing and will continue to do, right? You got, you got support all up in this room. Obviously, oh, so just make sure to holler if you need anything. Oh, for sure, man. Thank you guys, man. Yeah, I appreciate sure. you Thank guys you, inviting bro. me out here. Really? Off top. You know, Off top. I have fun. It's been, it's been a good experience, man. I, you know, and I'm going to keep listening. Yeah, man. And, and if uh, you ever need some quotes of the day, you oh, know, just man. hit me. I got oh, you. Oh, man. <laughs> You gonna have me? I thought you are gonna have me looking at tomatoes differently now. Dog. Like, yeah, I don't trust you, bro. Right. Um, but yeah, man, thank you again and again for the listeners, viewers, supporters. Thank you for rocking with us for fifty episodes. There's plenty more to come, right? Oh, we yeah. ain't stopping anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, for Justin, Jace, move. I think it's safe to say you're officially a member of the Up and Up. Here we get around the yeah. applause. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys.